Friends, hello! Today we will introduce you the basic knowledge which will help you to make choice of running shoes. Topic is types of running shoes, because it is actually huge number of them, and many of them aren't for running at all. Let's name all types and analyze running category in details. Let's start. First, almost immediately after its introduction, running shoes began to attract non-athletes to wear them in everyday life. The key here is that running shoes always have advanced cushioning, good stability, they are lightweight and well ventilated. Manufacturers understood this and continued to develop this direction. It has become a separate segment of running shoes. We do not recommend using them for sports. They are fairly easy to distinguish and have the following features. First, flat tread without rocker. Everyday wear assumes that you will be on your feet a lot and any protector creates instability, which means it is not needed here. The same go for a rocker. It creates instability that is not needed here. Second, top without additional fixation. In everyday wear we do not put stress on the upper. We do not need additional fixation to hold the foot, which means it will only make sneaker heavier and less comfortable. Third, upper with improvements for weather conditions. Since we are not limited in the use of only special types of fabrics, we can make more holes in the sneaker or make them warmer. They will either fix less or too heavy for sport, but for everyday wear they will serve perfectly in hot and cold seasons. Another type of running shoes is fitness shoes. The fact is that when we work out in the gym, one of our activities can be running. But the specificity of this shoe is created by another type of activities. First, stiff midsole. One of the activities will be weights. When we squatting with a barbell, we need to be sure that shoes will not behave like jelly, will be stable. Second, sides reinforcements. Both the upper and the midsole should be reinforced. This is to ensure that when we do side-to-side -side movements, the sneaker does not break and remains stable. Third, no rocker. This point is continuation of the previous two. In order for the shoe to be stable during other exercises, it must not be there. The next direction is track and field. This is one of the most exciting type of running shoes, because it is the fastest segment. And even more interesting is that there are a lot of them. For 100 meter running, for 200 meter running, which are improved for cornering, for 3000 meter running, and so on, more than 7 types. We will highlight this category in separate video one day. For now, we will restrict ourselves to only general features. First, spikes. At the stadium, we run on a special surface that allows the use of spikes. The grip is much better in them. Second, stiff carcass. Shoes should be responsive, so not to waste seconds waiting for response from soft foams. The shoes are equipped with stiff polyamide or carbon elements. Third, light upper. In these shoes, you need to show fast seconds, which means that excess weight is not needed here. Ok, next is the huge segment of asphalt running shoes, which has its own subsections. The subsections contain even more detailed subsections. But don't worry, we will explain everything. And the first section of running shoes is cushioning. In fact, this is the base from which everything starts. Models from this segment have good cushioning, good fixation, medium level of lightness and medium level of stability. Let's outline these benefits. First, good cushioning. This segment uses advanced midsole technologies. We'll have a separate video which will compare all available technologies. Second, good fixation. To ensure that the foot fits snugly against the midsole while running. Thirdly, medium stability. To keep the shoe stable, but not heavy. Further, you need to understand that there are three subtypes in this section. Basic, which has average performance, with extra cushioning, where the midsole is extended, shock absorption is increased. 
but the downside of this segment is the increased weight. And with added lightness, where the midsole is reduced. The weight is really reduced, and these models are easier to run faster, but the shock absorption is less in these models. Ok, let's continue. If a runner does not have trained stabilizers muscles, or simply prefers safer models, manufacturers add elements that help landing and takeoffs to be more predictable. Models from this segment are more bulky, heavy, but more stable and safer to use. Let's outline their distinctive features. Firstly, everything what we've seen in the Kushni segment. After all, these models are development of that segment. There must be cushioning, fixation and basic stability. Secondly, additional elements for stability, which are needed for additional predictability and security. As in the previous subsection, there are several types of them. Basic, which has average performance, with extra cushioning, where the midsole is extended, and with extra lightness, where the midsole is reduced. We continue. The next segment is created specifically for people with overpronation. However, although it was created for them, it can be freely used by people with a neutral pronation. Elements that are used in models from this segment reinforce the inner side of the shoe, which indirectly increases the stability of the shoe and makes it safer, but heavier and more bulky than cushioning models. Their features are all that we seen in the cushioning segment. After all, these models are development of that segment. There must be cushioning, fixation and basic stability. And secondly, additional foot support elements from the inner side of the sneaker, which are needed so that the arch of the foot does not fall through and there is a correction of pronation. As in the previous subsection, there are several types of them. Basic, which has average performance, with extra cushioning, where the midsole is extended, and with extra lightness, where the midsole is reduced. Everything that we have considered before is in some way comfortable models. Yes, not for everyone. Let's say lightweight models will be comfortable only for experienced runners with trained legs but they all have at least minimal level of cushioning and comfortable upper. And we move on to the speed segment. Speed models is not about comfort. Everything here should give an advantage. And therefore, models from this segment are lightweight. They have light hard top to save weight but keep the hole at good level. Second, lightweight midsole material to save weight but keep the responsiveness. And third, almost total lack of midsole or carbon plate inside. There are options in here. First is the ultimate lightness, when all the lightest materials are used in the model. The speed here is achieved by the fact that the shoe here does not disrupt the runner. Secondly, the innovation that came with the introduction of Nike Vaporfly 4%. This model features a carbon plate and a high midsole. Their speed secret lies in the rolling motion. Let's continue. With the introduction of carbon plate segment in speed, the training segment also began to change. People needed to train the rolling motion, the swing effect. Models in this segment are distinguished by a high midsole, greater running efficiency, but due to the height, they are also less stable. Their features are high midsole, in order for rolling motion to have more amplitude, Incline in front, in order to have the first impulse to fall, and responsive form, to help push the runner. As in previous section, there are several types of them. Basic, which has average performance, with extra cushioning, where the midsole is extended, with added lightness, where the midsole is reduced. Now you know all types of running shoes, there are 14 of them. But we must immediately clarify that each brand is not like the previous one. Brands make hybrids, cross segments, create their own directions. We will describe all of them in details in brands reviews. Probably you are still in doubt which segment is right for you. But for this we will have separate video which will be available soon. But one question remains, which models belong to which segment? We have an answer. Following the link in the description, we will fill the table of correspondence of models to segments. And now, 
if you know which segment you need, you can choose from specific models. It's all about for running models, but not all running models. There is a separate segment of trail running, and I must say that there are exactly the same amount of details as in the asphalt running. And one day we will light it up for you. For now, let's just note their distinctive features. First, traction. After all, we are running on rough terrain, we need extra grip. Second, lightness, to climb and to cover huge distances without wasting any energy. Thirdly, reinforcement for fixation and durability, so that the harsh environment does not accidentally damage them. These are the types of running shoes. I hope you know which you need. If you are still in doubt, a video where we will sort out how to choose a running model will soon appear here. Also, a video on how the technologies of different brands differ will appear here. These are two very useful videos in our opinion. Please click on one of them to help our channel to develop. Well, that's all for today. See you soon.